a very good evening to you and welcome to the 2022 Edinburgh Monarchs team reveal show. Uh, Happy New Year to you. I'm John McGilvery. And my name's Liam Rudden, and it's the moment we've all been waiting for, John, isn't it? The big reveal of the 2022 Edinburgh Monarchs. And of course, who better to do that with than the co-promoters themselves? It's John Campbell and Alex Harkis. Uh, good, good evening, gents, or good afternoon. Hi, welcome. Yeah. Good to see <laughs> nice you all. To, nice to see you, and, and may I wish everybody all, all watching a very happy new year. Yeah. Also, thank you for being very patient. I Some imagine it's been very busy behind the scenes, though, for the last couple of months. Um, the the winter time is always busy behind the scenes. Uh, this one is is not much different. Although um, the one thing that's changing each year is the the teams seem to get announced earlier and earlier, which doesn't give you an awful lot of time. But that's just the way it seems to be happening. Yeah, well, we've got lots to get through on tonight's show. Um, We're going to talk about how the team will look on the track as well, not just the names that are there, um, how you can get involved and how they will look. Um, Updates on things that go, memberships, partners, but most importantly, we'll be revealing the full 1-7 to for the 2022 Edinburgh Monarchs. Um, Firstly, John, I mentioned there regarding um, how the team will look. What have the club put in place for, for next season then? Yeah, well, I could say that the team are going to look different in 2022, but in fact, they're not going to look different. They're all going to look the same uh, because we're, we're, we're moving into the modern era and we're going to put our one to seven in uh, race suits, identical race suits in 2022. It's something we've thought long and hard about for very many years as, as more and more teams have uh, come out in race suits every season. So we're going to join in the fun in 2022. And in due course, we'll be offering uh, uh, supporters, uh, uh, local businesses, etc., the chance to uh, provide some sponsorship to help us acquire these race suits. Uh, so certainly if there's a supporter listening just now that wants to, to sponsor the race suit of their favourite rider, just send, an, an, uh, send us an email and we'll make sure you're top of the list on that one. Now, I'm going to make a wild guess here and... Uh go for the fact that there might be some blue and gold in the race suits and there might even be a wee bit tartan along the way somewhere when we finally get to see them. Um, and the supporters can get involved because they could see their name on some prominent part of the rider's body, really, when they're racing. Yeah, that's absolutely the case. Um, uh, I'm not really involved in the z- design work. I'm not a designer to trade in any manner. Alex more of a designer than I am. Um, he'll be pleased to hear. Uh, but... Uh, uh, <laughs> I have seen some some designs, just as you sh- say, Liam, with with uh, blue and gold and and uh, a touch of uh, tartan as well. So, yeah, that's that's what we'll set out to do for sure. So that's one way that people can get involved, um, but there are others as well. The partner scheme seems to be going from strength to strength. Yeah, we had a, a number of partners, business business people that supported us in in twenty twenty one. And we'll be getting in touch with them shortly to, to hopefully get them back on board again for the, the new season. And uh, in due course, sometime in January, we'll be making a formal announcement uh, to allow newcomers to join in that, that scheme. It's obviously very worthwhile to the club. Uh, our costs don't get any lower year on year. And uh, sponsorship's one of the ways that we bridge the gap. So uh, the partnership scheme and all kinds of sponsorship and advertising We'll be, we'll be announcing details of all of that uh, sometime in, in January. It's obviously <laughs> been quiet um, over the last couple of months, but clearly, and tonight will show that, the club have been working very hard behind the scenes um, to get 2022 up and running. Um, the world's changing constantly just now, you know, different restrictions, different uh, measures coming into play. What's the plan for the start of the season then? Are we looking, have we got a time scale on that or when we can see the guys on track for the first time? There's been there have been very very many meetings amongst the uh, um, promoters of the the championship throughout this close season. Zoom's a marvelous thing; <laughs> it saves a, a, a five-hour journey on the train or a six-hour journey on uh, in a car or or an inconvenient journey on a plane to get to rugby. So Zoom has made it very easy for for the promoters to chat uh, and. Uh, 
there was a certain amount of chat uh, earlier on in the close season suggesting that nobody would start until uh, um, Easter, which is in the middle of April in 2022. But uh, I'm involved in producing the championship fixture list at the moment. And um, I know that many clubs are actually uh, going to start before that. But, but we've still got in mind uh, Good Friday as, a, as a, a likely opening date, but nothing certain yet. Uh, but, but I don't think we'll be racing in, in the winter of, of March 2022. A few people have been asking about their gold memberships. Uh, John, I take it they're in the pipeline and we'll be getting announced shortly. Yeah, I'm kind of hogging the limelight here at the moment, <laughs> but uh, uh, we'll get Alec to, to uh, talk about things in a minute. Um, Yes, gold memberships again. Uh, we'll contact those uh, who were member, gold members in 2021 directly in due course, probably in the middle of January. And around about that time again, um, we'll be uh, announcing how uh, those that are not involved in that scheme as yet can become involved. Uh, once again, we have many, many thousands of pounds worth, worth of startup costs at the start of every season. And gold memberships certainly contribute greatly to our ability to cover those costs. Now, Alec, um, the 2022 team has been put together. Obviously, a few heads get banged together to put the team in place. Um, without naming names and, and ruining the surprise, what's your thoughts on the team that you guys have put together? Well, people know how we work by now. If they don't, they certainly should do, because we've been doing it for long enough. And the principles have never really changed. Um we put a team together that we believe can only get better. Does not always work. I admit that. And one or two times there's a bit of a gamble. But nevertheless, um, we believe that uh, they're all capable of getting better. Some of the, the top end of the team, of course, it's impossible for them to get much better because they're at the top of the game to start with. Uh, we accept that. But the further down the team you go, the, the, the more capable they are of getting better. And uh, nothing's changed. Uh, I don't think it'll ever change with John and I now. We know exactly what we're looking for, and, and that's what we set out to achieve. Alex, do you think there's any psychological advantage to having the team suit rather than the, the race jacket? I'm not convinced either way, uh, to tell you the truth. Uh, the team suits are absolutely great when it all works and they're all together in the suit. But uh, the minute, you, I think it's disappointing more because you see it on the telly when suddenly somebody's injured or somebody else has come in at short notice and they've not got a suit, so they've got something else and then they've got the bottom of a suit from another club and all these kind of things. That's the downside of it. We've never been involved in it before, um, but it is Edinburgh, so when we do it, we'll make sure we do it right because that's the only way we ever do anything. Brilliant. Um, I like that, the positivity um, as well. We're looking at... Any big decisions that were needed to be made? Was there any kind of arguments maybe? Oh, I want him, I want him. Or was it between you, kind of, the one to seven was fairly set and uh, and you were out to get that, those guys? Uh, to be fair, our, our, not one to seven, but very close to that, was in our minds at a time before the season finished. And quite a few riders told us that they were coming back to us and were in our plans. And then without actually telling us, went elsewhere. Uh, that was very disappointing. Uh, we could have done without that because we had the basis of a team there, which we then had to change. Uh, we've changed it, we believe, for the better. Um, but it pushed us back a little bit when you take somebody's word and they don't stick to it. But that, that's history now and uh, we've moved on from that. And I assume that you always have to have different permutations in your head anyway um, when you're approaching a, a team building. Well, John John does most of the spade work, I've got to say. And uh, you're never sure what's, how, how somebody's going to, to take it. You, you speak to a rider and, of course, you might never be able to do a deal with them. It's a favourite saying of mine when we speak to somebody and I, and I come up with a statement that... Uh, since the last time we spoke to him, he's obviously won the World Championship somewhere because he's worth an awful lot more than what I think he is. That's my standard uh, remark, I've got to say, these days. Um, but, of course, 
anybody looking for a job is trying to get the most they can. And of course, we don't want to pay them as much as we can, but uh, that that's the feeling and dealing it goes on. And that's John's department. So I'll, I'll leave him to that to a certain extent. And uh, um, you always get, a, you get to know very quickly how much they want to be here. And I think that's very, very important that you sign riders who actually want to be here. If they don't want to be here, and they've got a five hour journey to get here, they're going to get fed up very quickly. So one of the most important things is, is picking seven riders who actually want to be here. Right. So John, just before we, we leave you guys and go and announce the, the one to seven, your thoughts on, on the team that we've put together this year. Yeah, well, Alex very much said it there. Um, we've, we've picked on guys that uh, uh, have the ability to improve their averages and that's how you win league titles. Uh, if you if you sign up riders that don't improve, then you don't get anywhere. Uh, Alex also said that that uh, our top guys are maybe almost almost at their peak, but I think they're just not quite there yet. So I think even our top guys have a wee bit to go yet to add to their averages. Of course, uh, circumstances can affect that. Injuries put you off for a time. Uh, you get a very wet track. You maybe don't fancy things like that. But I think we've got a team that is filled with riders that are capable of increasing their averages. Uh, and on that basis, we'll do very nicely. Is it time to meet the team, John? I think it is. Guys, we'll leave you for now. We'll come back and speak to you after we've introduced the team. But thanks for joining us for now. It's time to find out who the 1-7 to seven are for the 2022 Edinburgh Monarchs. And we start by heading down south for our first of the 2022 team. Hi everyone, looking forward to, uh, to riding for Edinburgh in 2022, uh, looking forward to getting back on the bike as well. Uh, I've just recently been given the all clear by the physios and the doctors to uh, start training again with my, with my leg after the crash last season. So uh, yeah, I'm uh, looking forward to it and I'll see you all in March. Well there he is, it's good to see James back. He was of course meant to be with us last year but because of the rising star difficulties and the team changes, he didn't make it, but he's back and he spent half of the 2019 season with us and he proved to be very popular as well. He does like to make a fast start, as we all know, and uh, the odd tapes explosion along the way. Um, and he should have been here with us in 2021. Red Car signed him and he did well um, there and he's well on his way with recovery after that terrible crash that he had at Armadale um, last season. He's 28 years old from Sheffield. And he finished last season on an average of 4.18 and will be at reserve for the start of the season. Um, I don't know all this. Mike Hunter puts all this together for us. He's the brains behind all of this. Um, but it's great to see James at number one. And at number two, well, not at number two, but the second rider that we're going to be announcing, um, we head over to Norway to meet him. That probably gives it away, but we're going to Norway. Hi, everyone. Lasse Fredriksen here. I hope you all had a very good Christmas and uh, I want to wish you all a happy new year. I'm so excited to tell you all that uh, I have signed for the Edinburgh Monarchs again in 22. I uh, can't wait to get started there. Uh, been a lot going on recently with the, with the training and, and, and as you can see here, I'm building bikes for 22. So uh, yeah. Hope you all are just as excited as I am to, to come to the uh, to the Armadale in in, uh, in March and yeah I'm sure we're gonna have a good time together and yeah I think we can go all the way so here's to a good 22 and see you all there in March stay safe. Yeah, Lassie Fredrickson is uh, finally an Edinburgh Monarch in the blue and gold. He was actually on his way over to start the 2020 season with us uh, when the first COVID lockdown was announced. And then amidst all the problems of visas and the rising star issues, he didn't get a place for 2021. So we were almost duty bound to offer him a slot in 2022, especially as he's remained as enthusiastic as ever about starting his UK career at Armadale. He did ride a meeting over here last season, uh, the Grand Prix qualifier at Glasgow, and he impressed 
the people who saw him there in a high quality field. Lassie is 24 from Varhog, if I've said that right, Lassie. If I've not, you can let me know. And is the reigning Norwegian champion. He will be making his Monarchs debut, having previously ridden just once at Armadale at the 2018 Jubilee event. And his assessed average will be five points. Yeah, and for rider number three, we're heading across to the other side of the world and to Queensland for rider number three. Hey everyone, it's um, Josh Pickering here, just dropping this message for you to let you know that I'm um, coming back for another year. Uh, been with you now since 2017 and yeah, I, I can't wait to get 2022 on the road. Uh, since I've been home, it's been you know a great time catching up with all my friends and family and, and all that stuff. I've done a little bit of training, but not so much. Just waited for the new year just to enjoy a bit of time without... You know, the Australian Championships and majority of the state championships because of COVID. But, um, yeah, now I've got, uh, what is it, the New South Wales title coming up on the 2nd of January, which I'm looking forward to that. Hopefully, you know, have a, have a good night of racing and um, I'm trying to go out there and hopefully come away with a win. Uh, I go good at Curry and it's my hometown as well, so it's going to have a lot of home support there, which I'm looking forward to that. And um, also on the 7th of January, I'm racing in Mildura for the, it's an invitational meeting down there. Uh, followed up by the 15th of January, I'm doing the Darcy Ward invitation in Brisbane. So, um, yeah, a few meetings on the trot. And, um, yeah, I'll just follow it up with six weeks, a bit of off-the-bike training and catching up with friends again. And, um, yeah, head back over end of February, early March to do it all again. So looking forward to seeing you all and I hope you've had a great Christmas and a, a safe and happy new year so take care and I'll see you soon oh by the way I'm up here <laughs> not a bad spot that's great the man we call Mr Entertainer just had to be back for his fifth full season with us plenty of the teams would have liked to have had him but he returns for the Monarchs he's raised his average every year that he's been with us and last season not far short of 1.5 points in spite of still leaving the improvement in his gating. He's a regular winner of a race of the season and he's now 25 and it will come in at an 8.34 average. And for the next rider um, joining the 2022 Edinburgh Monarchs, we head again to Australia. Hey guys, Jacob Hook here from Brisbane, Australia. Been riding Speedway solo bikes for eight years now. Super excited to join the Edinburgh Monarchs in 2022. See you all there. See you at track. Yes, Jacob Hook is joining the team and we're always on the lookout for up and coming Australian riders. And he's the latest young hopeful to join us uh, from Burpengari, East <laughs> Queensland. He's age 19, Burpengari. John, have you heard of Burpengari? Never, never heard of it. We're going to thunder that. Makes up these pounds of <laughs> Jacob is 19 and he's won honours at junior level in Australia, although along with everyone else, his progress has been hampered by lack of activity during the COVID crisis. Um, he's a good record in Australian events over recent seasons, uh, but this will be a big step for him to do his first British season. He's coming in on a four-point average, and as we've just heard, he has also just become a runner-up in the Under-21 New South Wales Championship. So that can only be a good sign, John. Yes, positive stuff before the start of the season, and we're going to stay in Australia for our fifth rider. Hey everyone, at Edinburgh Monarch Speedway. I hope you all had a great Christmas. Uh, it's good to have a little break here in Australia and catch up with friends and family and reflect on a great 2021 season. I'm stoked to say that I'll be back with the, the club in 2022. So yeah, it, uh, it's not far away now. We'll get, get back into training and, and practice and Darcy Ward's got some big meetings coming up so yeah the the great lineups and that'll definitely get us warmed up for for the new season and yeah not long now and uh we'll see you all at armadale stadium up the monarchs yep ozzy kai returns for his second season with the monarchs having won both the mssc rider of the year and the george wells memorial trophy for most improved young rider no one can doubt what a season Kai had, and he was certainly one of the best newcomers to British Speedway. Um, and he raced in his second race 
he left the British champion Charles Wright behind him. Um, he's relatively quiet winter back home, and of course there's no Australian Championship this season, um, but he'll be fired up to build on the success of his first season. He's 23 years old and finished the season on a 5.46 average. And in all matches last season, his record was 33 matches, 148 rides, 209 points, plus a whopping 38 bonus points. So welcome back to Kai Thompson. Okay, and next we go to Argentina. Hello, everyone. Uh, Paco Castagna here from Italy. Uh, actually, from Italy, but not in Italy at the moment. I'm in Argentina racing, and uh, so far it's going good. Five out of five, and racing again tomorrow. So, looking good, getting ready for the new season, and I'm very, very happy to join Edinburgh for the new year. Um, it's going to be a challenging season, but looking forward. To, um, to win a lot with you and uh, it will be a lot of fun so I'm looking forward to meet you all at the track and uh, meet all the people I uh, always heard that the the, fun, the fans and, and all the people at Edinburgh are always very very kind and good so I'm looking forward to that and looking forward to win to win something so it will be good and uh, catch up in the new year ciao ciao Yes, Paco Castagna is joining the Monarchs. Uh, for the third time in our history, we will be tracking an Italian rider this season as we've signed the ex-Birmingham rider. He's a double Italian champion who has made great improvements in recent years. He's twice scored double figures against us for the Brummies at Peribar, and in his last Armadale appearance, he totaled eight paid 12 against us. Rather have him on our side than against us, eh, John? Absolutely. <laughs> Birmingham fans will be disappointed that he's leaving, but we are delighted to have him. His dad is world finalist Armando, who has ridden at Powder Hall and at Armadale and is currently one of the top officials at the FIM. Paco is 27 from, and I'm going to have a go at this, <laughs> Arzengnana, Arzengnano, there you go, something like that, and will start the season on an average of 5.52. Yeah, it'll be great to see Paco at Armadale next season. Now, lastly, we have a rider who's been with the Monarchs a few years now. We'll go back to Australia for the last of our riders. Hello, everyone there in Edinburgh. Um, just actually raced in the New South Wales Championship at Curry, second. So first would have been nicer. But anyway, but I, uh, been, I'm at home now. That was my first meeting since the season finished. I've uh, been riding my motocross bike, push bike a lot. Um, seen Pico a, f a fair bit really, so it's, it's been good to be home with my family. But uh, I'm definitely looking forward to coming back next year, or this year, I should say. It's, uh, it's going to be it's gonna be good fun. Everyone knows how I feel about Edinburgh, so I don't need to st sit in and say too much. So um, back for another enjoyable season. It'll be awesome to see all the fans and, and all our friends and everyone there in, in Edinburgh and obviously the management that I get along good with. So um, I've heard there's uh, some, some changes this year and that'll be that'll be cool. I'm looking forward to it. So see you all soon and take care while this COVID stuff's around and let's hope nothing interferes with our fun. See you soon. Yes, our number one for the start of the season will once again be our Australian legend, Smiling Sam. He returns for his seventh season as a monarch and one of our greatest ever Riders. Amongst his many achievements, he's a former Australian champion, a Grand Prix rider. He was winner of, our, of all of the major team and individual competitions during the Premier League era. And of course, he's a double league winning champion with Monarchs having recorded five on heat victories in 2014 and 2015 to clinch those titles alongside Craig Cook. So Sam gets what he says every year he wants, and that is to ride for the Monarchs in the Championship and Wolverhampton in the Premiership, and he'll also be riding in Poland next year. He finished the average on a uh, season on an average of 9.41, the highest in the Championship, and Sam is now 30 from Newcastle, New South Wales. I got the easy towns by the looks of it, Liam. And his full record for us is amazing, namely 203 matches, 951 rides, 2,137 points, and 123 bonus. Great having Sam at the, the top end of the team again this year, Liam. It is indeed, and what a mix, John. You know, there's familiar favourites in there, there's some exciting new faces, and, and the odd wild card that we're just going to have to wait and see. What more could you ask for? Well, we're certainly looking forward to the start of this season. Ed. We'll bring back in John and Alex, and they can tell us their thoughts on the 2022 team. 
Well, there you go, the 2022 Edinburgh Monarchs. You now know who will be wearing the blue and gold for us this coming season. John, a great mix of riders there. Absolutely, Liam, absolutely. It's great to have uh, Sam, Josh and Kai back. I think every Monarch supporter to a man, woman and child will be delighted to see the three of them there. Paco Castagna mixes it up a wee bit. He'll be exciting. We've got James Sargent. Great to see him back in Monarch's colours as well. Lassie finally getting the opportunity to show us what he can do. And then you've got the uncertainty, the excitement of Jacob coming over as well and, and watching him um, go from the beginning as we've done so many times with some Australian riders that have come over. Um, but it's not about what we think, Liam. It's these guys. We want to know their thoughts on the 1-7. to seven. Alex, the team manager, we'll start with you. Um, some some exciting names and there are lots to get excited about for next season. Absolutely. It's um, it's it's what an Edinburgh team should be and always will be, I'm sure. Um, a little bit of uncertainty, loads and loads of hope and, and loads of positivity amongst there. Um, they're capable of doing anything. It, it's as simple as that. If, if and when they all click, I'm sure they'll do very, very well. Uh, the top end should take care of itself. Uh, the bottom end is is more experienced. I know that uh, Jacob's not experienced in this country, but with with James Sargent in at reserve at the bottom, um, we should be picking up more points at reserve than what we have done last season, for instance. But uh, uh, it, it's promising and it's exciting. And when you look at the riders, um, Alex, and you take them one at a time, have you set them targets that you expect them to reach? when they, 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 they don the blue and gold? Is, have you told them what you're expecting from each of them? And it's very simple. We want They have an average. They've come with an average. They've got to exceed that average. It's as simple as that. If they all exceed the average, we'll win the league. It's very simple. Uh, that, that has to be their aim. And uh, if, if, if they can all do that, then we're quite happy. We're, we're not setting impossible tasks. It's quite simple make your average better. How important is it to have Sam back there leading from the front? I think it's very important at all times to have a, a, a number one who's an out-and-out out winner and he expects to win every race. And so, so do we, really. Uh, it can't do that all the time. It's not humanly possible. But nevertheless, it's, it's a number one. It's as good a number one as there is in our whole league. Uh, and we're delighted by that. Yeah, John, well, obviously we tied in, in 2021, or 20 rather, 21, sorry, to get um, James Sargent and Lassie Fredrickson in the team. It wasn't to be. Is it satisfying them to get them in for this year? It's nice to, to, to have them go, gone through a procedure that gave them a place in the team and then having to knock them out. Yeah. It's nice to be offering a, a place, a chance again. Um Lassie obviously has been waiting uh, for for two years to get his chance. He's never deflected from from wanting to ride for the Monarchs. He's always been very very keen, and uh, I think we can see from his from his video that he's uh, uh, very very keen to be part of the team. Uh, and James Sargent's situation, I think it's great that we've got him at reserve. When we look at riders that can um, improve their averages, uh, James Sargent is going to start on a four point one. Four is that like four point one eight? Yep, yeah. yeah. and, and, and surely, surely he's he's capable of adding at least a point to that. Um, he's uh, he's been uh, he's recovered almost completely now from his big crash at uh, Armadale at the end of last season. Uh, so um, he's he, he can't wait to get back on a speedo bike and get on with it. And and uh, at reserve, I think he'll do very nicely. He'll be at reserve with um, Jacob Hook, who just recently uh, he was runner-up in the Under-21 New South Wales Championship. How exciting! Sh how excited should we be getting about seeing him racing at Armadale? Yeah, that's a good question. How excited should we, we get? Of course, uh, there are there are. Uh, I think it'd be fair to say that if we got another Kai Thompson, it would be extraordinary if that was to happen. So we shouldn't set our sights on another Kai Thompson, although although they come from very close together. Up and uh, dis despite uh, uh, Jacob finishing second in the New South Wales Championship, he does, of course, come from Queensland uh, and fairly close neighbour. If you can get close neighbours in, in Australia to Kai Thompson. Um, but we shouldn't, be, we shouldn't be expecting a, a, another Kai Thompson 
it would be great if it happens. What we need is for, for Jacob to settle on our track, get the hang of it. And if he does that, then he'll build confidence. And if he builds confidence, he'll score points. You can you test the expectations there? It's, uh, it, it's, we don't want to get carried away and expect them to do what Kai did. Um, but Paco Castagna seems to have come out of nowhere. And for me, is an exciting signing. We saw him at Armadale um, last season. Um, what, how did it come about when we signed Paco? <laughs> Well, Paco's a different kettle of fish altogether from a lot of riders. He doesn't lack confidence when you speak to him. Um, when I first spoke to, to Paco, he, he was enthusiastic, to put it mildly, about riding at Armadillo. I think his words were, once I get that track sorted out, I'll be unbeatable there. <laughs> so I thought, well, that's not a bad start for Paco. Uh, and for there, he just um, he goes on and on. He, he's... He's effervescent for the want of a better word, you know. Um, uh, I think he creates a, a, an atmosphere as well, which is, is a plus, you know. He's just one of these characters. I think, uh, I think he'll do very well, actually. I've not much, had much contact with, with Paco previously. Um, I was absolutely petrified that he'd be riding against us for Birmingham at the end of last season and was grateful when he didn't come back to ride in one of those matches. Mm -hmm. But uh, the, the, the previous contact I had with a Castagna was very, very many years ago where his dad swung a punch at me and just missed my chin by a few inches. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Dare we ask why he was wanting to punch you, John? Well, he was just taking a swing at anybody. I can't remember what exactly <laughs> the incident was, but uh, he certainly got very excited that night. And as Alex already said, Paco is super excitable and, and super excited. I'll just give you a, a lovely wee story about Paco. I, I uh, phoned him uh, to, to try and put a deal together and, uh, and he answered his phone fairly quickly and he said, who's calling please? And I said, it's John Campbell from Edmund Monarchs. And he said, don't speak to me, don't speak to me. Hang up, hang up, don't speak to me. And I thought, what a strange thing to say. And then he said, I've just landed in Argentina. It's costing you a fortune to speak to me. Phone me back on WhatsApp. <laughs> <laughs> Brutal as well as confident. <laughs> now, we were talking about Kai Thompson there, and obviously Kai had a dream first season um, when he joined the Monarchs last year. Um, might we expect too much of him this year, or is he ready to make that next step? I don't, I don't think we're expecting too much of him. Quite simply, you can see so many places that it can actually get better again. When you think of what you achieved, uh, and it was still... The bit of a struggle to get started. Um, you can still see so many places where he can improve without doing an awful lot. So um, he'll set his own his own standard for sure. But um, I'm I'm very very positive towards Kai uh, that he will increase his average. And it's not all so strange now. He's done it all before. He's found his way about. He knows the tracks. Um, even even Armadale got to remember a year ago was a completely strange item to him, uh, let alone do it in different weather conditions, which is a big enough challenge for anybody. But uh, a second year will be that bit easier, I think. And I'm expecting him to increase his average for sure. Yeah, and on, on Josh Pickering as well, it's great to have, have Mr. Entertainment back. John, I know you were concerned we might lose him. He's had a, such a big impact in the Premiership. Last season, he's key for us having a great season this year, isn't he? Yeah, well, Josh is the entertainer, isn't he? Absolutely the entertainer. And the only thing that's holding him back is that he's so busy entertaining that he doesn't make the start often enough. Uh, and of course, if he made the start, then he wouldn't be the entertainer. So we've got a catch-22 situation there. Are we looking for uh, Mr. Boring this year then? Yeah. <laughs> well, uh, to reach the very, very top, sometimes you have to be Mr. Boring. Yeah. Uh, but... but uh, uh, I'm not sure Josh is ever going to master the, the perfect starting technique. Uh, he is the man that everybody wants to see. When you go to away tracks, everybody talks about him and, and how well he's done. Uh, and, and, and yeah, he's going to step up a, a bit further in 2022, there's no doubt. He's, he's starting the season as a, a premiership rider also, uh, rather than looking around as he was uh, for 2021. And I think because of that, he will be better prepared for 2022 and we'll gain the benefit from that. We haven't mentioned Sam Masters, really. Um, he'll come back to spearhead the team. Um, again, hugely, hugely important 
that we have Sam there at the top end, Alex? Oh, without a doubt. Um, the team is built around Sam from day one. Uh, that's always going to be the case. Uh, he doesn't want to be anywhere in our league other than Edinburgh. It's never, ever going to be anywhere else other than with us. And uh, we're, we're absolutely delighted. Uh, he is a leader. He's a winner. And uh, he knows exactly what's required to win. Uh, and it does help. You know, there's a, let's say, more than a fair share of Australians in the team. So it helps to have him uh, at number one because he's there to help everybody in the team. But uh, Australians obviously will look to him as well. So we're delighted to have Sam back. Yeah, it, it could be no other way but having Sam back. Well, it all sounds really exciting. It's a good, uh, exciting team to be watching. Um, one thing we maybe should ask you about before we go is uh, the stadium. There's been a lot of uh, speculation, shall we say, on the social forums and the Speedway forum and what have you. Um, are we safe at Armadale? Um, I've been very, very much involved in what's been going on at Armadale Stadium for a number of months now. And uh, I'll, I'll put it simply to you. All's well. Simple as that. All's well. Good. Brilliant. Guys, well, listen, thank you very much for joining us and uh, telling everyone who the 2022 Monarchs are going to be. I, for one, can't wait for the season to get started. Liam, I'm sure you're exactly the same. John, it's a brilliant lineup. And do you know what? So much about Speedway is about watching these new young yep. talents that come in, watching how they develop, and actually watching how the older ones keep going and help them get through the, their first years in the sport. Um, so, yeah, I, I just love that whole aspect of it, watching the team develop, watching them come together, watching them click. And I think this is going to be a, a great year for doing just that. Yeah, brilliant. Well, thanks again, guys, for joining us. We look forward to having you all in the tower um, next day, uh, well, it'll be April now, by the sounds of it. So, and, and getting some of these characters like Paco up to join us. Um, so the club will be out telling you how we can get involved with the race suits, the partners scheme and the gold memberships as well. You'll hear plenty from the club over the coming weeks and months. And we'll see you all back at Armadale again very, very soon. Thanks for joining us.